Dear friends, it is uh, quite surprising how the intellectual uh, society or the people who claim themselves intelligent are being illusioned by the concept of Darwinian view of evolution for so many years. Actually, we all know that uh, according to Darwin's view, that uh, the non-life, that means the essential molecules, they existed in a warm little pond and from there somehow some suitable condition uh, in that circumstances the first life arise and that first life uh, following a path of uh, uh, small changes, small changes, random changes and by the process of natural selection led to all the living entities that we observe today. So this idea somehow not being seriously questioned and it become like a religion in our society in the name of science actually. Anybody try to scientifically question this view people in that scientific world start to attack them as if uh, you know it is unquestionable. So they propose that uh, science should be practiced based on the verification, scientific verification, but somehow that's very, uh, what you can say, foundation of that uh, uh, claim is being challenged when we are talking about the concept of Darwin. And we see, you know, in a recent past in India when the syllabus uh, omitted Darwin's, uh, you know, idea, so much opposition came and uh, even in the top journal, Nature, it become almost political journal where it starts to publish what the Indian uh, what you can say textbooks are you know uh, what you can say publishing or not containing or not so as if it is mandatory uh, that Darwin's idea must be mentioned or brainwashed to the young children but let let us try to examine the concept of Darwin's theory in a rational uh, point of view, we are rational being. We want to understand it. How the first life arise by following the Darwin's view of origin of life. There were some essential molecules. Uh, somehow they were existing, or somehow they were being po produced by nature in some accidental circumstances, and they all come together and it produced the first living entity which is a, a single cell organism. Is it a, a intelligent idea to propose? So let us take a very simple example of this pen. Uh, this pen, if uh, this cap exists somehow by natural forces, the cap is produced and this cover is also produced and this inside refill is also produced. And they are lying. How can this pen uh, being, uh, you know, functional by connecting some kind of uh, natural forces, they connected it. Is it a valid argument? Even a small or uh, simple pen will not come from that kind of, you know, procedure, uh, that kind of, what you can say, childish explanation. It will not come. How come a complex cell that we know from the cellular biology will come from that? We know from the cellular biology that there are molecular machines, they call it molecular machines in that. And those molecular machines, the molecules, they say that they are talking with each other. Cell sentiently separates one chemical reaction from another chemical reaction. Because if two uh, chemical reactions, uh, they mix together, uh, they will produce unwanted chemicals, which is not desirable for the cell. Cell does so many, uh, what you can say, complex functions that we know as the cell biology uh, advanced. Still, uh, it is being encouraged for people to publish papers on chemical evolution theory. Somehow, chemicals evolved 
following Darwinian concept of evolution and they produced the first life and so many papers still being accepted on this concept of chemical evolution. So this is completely unscientific and the people are not uh, spending little bit of their time and you know they are thinking towards this unscientific idea that is being proposed on the name in the name of science. The second thing is that even somehow the first cell uh, somehow manifested from that cell how all these other forms of life forms manifested. We know that the um, cell biology from the cell biology we know that the DNA uh, which uh, carries the information from one uh, offspring to the uh, next. So then how that uh, you know what you can say DNA which has uh, that information uh, every cells uh, DNA has the uh, information in the zygote uh, a dog zygote has the information that uh, it will produce a dog it will never produce an elephant even though there may be small difference may be there from one organism to another organism the small difference uh, in the DNA chemical structure is not enough the information the the information the the potency that is there in the uh, what you can say the DNA or uh, the cell it is not only the DNA is important the cell is also important because DNA by itself cannot do anything DNA uh, by itself cannot replicate itself or do the or the functions that it executes in the cell because cell sentiently controls DNA the action of DNA we cannot say that our hand is doing things uh, it is we we are using the hand similarly cell is using the DNA to do certain functions so this is very very important thing to ask uh, how some accidental changes can produce uh, a uh, or, or transform a ape into a human being is it possible a dog uh, by accident the dog zygote can it produce a elephant we can see even within the uh, single organism uh, any multicellular organism that zygote divides and it produces many varieties of the cell uh, like our body it produces eye cell it produces kidney cells it produces heart cells blood cells so many cells varieties of the cells it is producing and it, these, these changes, they are not happening by some mutations or the accidents. It is not happening by that. It is happening by the organic developmental process. Cell is not coming by some accidental combination of you know, certain parts, so-called parts. Cell is coming from another cell by the cell division. It is an organic developmental process. And this very concept is being completely ignored in this uh, mechanistic view of uh, Darwinian idea of evolution. What is the basis? You know, so many uh, tests have been done on the adaptive changes on bacteria, uh, single cell organism bacteria, which produces offsprings very, very fast. So many generations it has been tested, but bacteria remain a bacteria. Bacteria never change into another new organism. There may be certain changes uh, by adaptive changes, uh, change of you know the height or change of color or change of you know the resistance power. All these things is possible. The small changes which are which uh, uh, some people term as you know uh, micro evolution, uh, small changes. But those adding up of those micro evolution, they never produce a macro evolution, and those changes are also never being recorded in the fossil data micro to macro those changes uh, are not recorded in the fossil data so the tree of uh, life which darwin imagined is being challenged by the genetic data where now we are talking about the forest of life means all organisms they are interlinked with each other so this thing uh, has to be seriously questioned and uh, you know we are our uh, Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Institute and uh, Princeton Bhaktivedanta Institute under the leadership of Srila Bhakti Madhav Puri Maharaj, we are working towards uh, you know, this idea that uh, 
we have to practice uh, and should not be afraid to do a scientific critique of science. Uh, we have to examine the concepts that are being proposed uh, merely based on faith within science, the concept of origin of life, the concept of evolution and so many other ideas. So we have to examine them based on the evidence. What is the evidence that is you know, showing us? And it should not be uh, discouraged or attacked uh, because uh, it is uh, challenging the faith of majority of the people who are practicing science. It's because uh, we cannot practice science like a religion. Uh, it's a religion of Darwin uh, as if we are practicing within science. So my spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Sarup Damodar Maharaj, Dr. T.D. Singh, he was constructing a temple in Manipur and uh, uh, his uh, uh, what you can say, spiritual master Sila Esi Bhaktivyan Sankar Upad, he asked him to go and take guidance from Sila Siddhar Maharaj after his disappearance. So he was taking guidance from Sila Siddhar Maharaj uh, about his service in scientific presentation of uh, Vedic teachings, Krishna consciousness. So Sila Siddhar Maharaj told him the uh, when he he has explained to Sila Siddhar Maharaj informed to Sila Siddhar Maharaj that I am constructing a temple in Manipur, he has uh, told that uh, Sila uh, Swami Maharaj that means Sila Isi Bhaktivinoda Sai Prabhupada has asked you to build a temple on the tomb of Darwin. So that's what he has told. That means he has encouraged uh, the, to what you can say present the Vedic teaching in a scientific uh, way. So that uh, the misconception that is, you know, taking um, some, you know, uh, deep root in the heart of the uh, people in society can be removed so that they can uh, confidently practice the valid scientific explanations in the bona fide religion. Uh, so that is our mission, how to, uh, what you can say, help people to accept things based on uh, rational argument and scientific evidence and uh, that can be uh, in favor of religious view that does not mean that that does not have any space any uh, what you can say scope for study within science science cannot eliminate the study of life that means scientist and we don't know many things about life in in science science has no theory about uh, uh, mind no theory about happiness no theory about uh, fulfillment, uh, how to control anger, how to control ego uh, and this attitude, how to change our attitude. See, uh, because of all these things, we see that people are misutilizing the, their, what you can say, so-called advanced scientific knowledge to destroy our environment uh, and uh, uh, there is uh, no valid way that we can guide them within science, uh, the anxiety levels are increasing, the suicide rates are increasing, how we can solve the problems uh, which are coming from the human behavior. Uh, because we don't have any concepts uh, within science, the molecular uh, uh, theories that we have, the law of physics, the laws in the chemical uh, theories that we have, the, the concepts we have in chemistry. And that cannot be directly applied to biology. We cannot reduce biology to the department of physics and chemistry. We have to take off a different kind of uh, approach to understand life and that will be very much beneficial for our human society. Thank you very much.